Okay, just a quick uh, Snell's Law example here. A water wave, lambda, or wavelength is 0 0.8 meters, is traveling at 4.45 meters per second in deep water. It slows to 0.35 meters, second, meters per second as it enters a region of shallow water. The wave enters the shallow water with an angle of an instance of 35 degrees. Determine the wavelength, frequency, and angle of refraction in the shallow water. Okay, so first of all, we have two speeds here. We're going to use these two speeds to get the ratio of the refractive indices in shallow and deep water. Recall that speed is inversely proportional to refractive index. So if I set up my ratio, it doesn't matter who I put on top, but I'll put shallow water on top. Refractive index of shallow water divided by refractive index of deep water. Then when I set up my ratio on the other side, it's inverse to that, so I'll have the velocity in the deep water divided by the velocity in the shallow water. So that's 0 0.45 meters per second and 0 0.35 meters per second. So that's the ratio of the refractive indices. I can't get either one of them directly because we're dealing with a water wave. We don't have something like the speed of light in a vacuum as an absolute top speed to compare everything to. So all we can do is the ratio of the, of the two things. There's no absolute top speed for the wave. So there you go, the ratio of the refractive indices is 1.286, shallow to deep. So now using that, I can come up with all the other things. So let's start with wavelength. First of all, the wavelength, again, is inversely proportional to refractive index. So I have the wavelength in deep water to be 0 0.8 meters. So I want the wavelength in shallow water. So I'm going to go wavelength in shallow, shallow divided by wavelength in deep. And again, this is an inverse relationship, so that means that I should have ND over NS over here. Now that's the inverse of this, right? I have S over D here. Now I have D over S. So instead of putting 1.28 on this side, I'm going to put the inverse 1 over 1.286. Lambda in the shallow water is what I'm looking for. Lambda in the deep water is 0 0.8 meters. And now I can solve for lambda. I get my new wavelength to be 0 0.622 meters. So that's the wavelength. I need frequency and angle of refraction. So let's do angle next. For the angle, we're going to use Snell's law. NS sine theta S is going to be equal to N deep sine theta deep. So I'm going to solve this, bringing NS over ND so that I can get this the way that I had it. So NS divided by ND. And then I'll leave my other parts alone, sine theta s and sine theta d. And then looking at my question, it says, the wave enters the shallow area with an angle of incidence of 35 degrees. So that's as it comes in. So that's actually in the deep water. So that's the theta in the deep water. Now I can replace with th this with the known ratio, 1.286. And I'm just looking for sine theta s here. Divide both sides by 1.286. So sine theta s is going to be equal to the sine of 35 divided by 1.286. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Let me try that again. Sine 35 divided by 1.286 is 0 0.446. Zero point four four six, and then I can take the inverse sine of both sides. So inverse sine that, and I get twenty six point five degrees. Okay, so that's my angle of refraction and my wavelength in the shallow water. So all I'm missing is my frequency. 
I can get my frequency by using the universal wave equation, V equals F lambda. And I can use that in the shallow or the deep water. It doesn't make any difference because when a wave goes from one medium to another medium, its frequency remains constant. So whichever one I find it in, that's the same frequency regardless of where we're at. With that in mind then, I'll use the deep water because those are the given pieces of information I had in the first place. And that way, if I made a mistake at any point during this question, I won't carry that mistake forward. So divide both sides by 0 0.8. And I get 0 0.5625 hertz. Now, since uh, it should work for deep and shallow water, as a check, I can come up with that frequency in shallow water and that'll be a nice way of checking to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes, at least in the parts of the question that involved this. So the speed in shallow water was 0.35, the wavelength was 0 0.622. So if I've done this right, then my frequency should work out to be the same thing. And I got 0 0.5627. The difference here is just a rounding difference. And so my check shows that when I found this wavelength, I did that correctly. So that's a Snell's Law example for a wave moving from a shallow water to a deep water. We'll do another example here in a minute, but I think I'll keep that separate for another video just to keep these short.